Welcome back, part two. We're gonna do all the electronics. Uh, at this time, I don't actually have my flight, while I'm recording this part of the video, I don't have my flight controller or my camera, but I'm gonna try and knock out some of the other parts while I'm waiting for it so I don't stretch this uh, series out too long. So I've got the motor mount. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and snap to that right now. And welcome back. So now we got a motor mount. That'll go right in there. We'll glue that in later. Um, but that's all glued up and ready to go. So we're going to set that to the side. And then what we're going to do first is the servos. So if you have the kit, it comes with these two little servo extensions. Um, and then you could just go ahead and put that on any old servo, feed them through. Actually, you probably got to feed it through first. Um, and it should get you about the right length to get to a uh, flight controller or receiver, whatever you have in here. You might even be able to make it stretch and work without doing anything. But what I like to do is uh, try and make this a nice clean build. The other thing is um, I'm not going to use this servo, which actually looks like these Tower Pro, Tower Pro MG uh, 90s, good servos, uh, metal gear and pretty reliable. Um, that wire actually seems to be a really good length for it. But what I'm gonna do, instead of using that, I wanna use these two Corona Metal Gears. They're uh, Corona CS939 Metal Gear. They're analog, but Metal Gear, and they're good heavy duty servers. I like these. But uh, as you can see, this one I shortened the lead, and this one I've actually <laughs> extended, and then it looks like I extended it more later. So I wanna make these down to um, single stretch first off, but the right so length for um, going from the servo pocket to the bay. So to help with that, move this stuff off again. I've got, I have this roll. I bought this, um, I believe it's Henson Hobbies. I'll put a link down below. They've got all kinds of wire and other, other goodies. And uh, I just had, I think I bought like a thousand feet when I did it. Um, and I just use this wire and what I'll do, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to open this servo up and solder this one end to the servo. And then on the other end, and then on the other end, I've got this kit and we're going to actually pin up. And this kit was really cool. I got this off uh, just Amazon, I think, or something, but we'll put a three pin um, on there. However, this kit has all kinds of um, two by two three by three, four pin. These are really good if you're using the flight controllers and you got UARTs, um, you can do your positive ground transmit and uh, receive pins in one. Uh, you got two by four, all that, two, five, six, two by five, two by six. And it's got tons of the pins. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll grab that and another one of those. And then you crimp those. You can just crimp them in. Um, they go, the wire goes down in. And I'll try and show this as good as I can later when I get to that. But I actually like to solder them a little bit just to give it that extra connection. So first thing I'm going to do is actually strip these down real quick. I'm going to take the arms off them just to make them a little easier to work with. And uh, like I said, I like just doing this to get a good clean, um, especially when if you have servos laying around and you've got one that only has two inches and one that has way too much and two splices in between, um, that helps. I will show while I got this some just a little bonus tip. Uh, when I, I used to work on uh, military aircraft and learned uh, when you do uh, splicing of multiple wires, if you offset them like this, so you got one here, one here, one here, instead of putting them all in one spot, this way the heat shrink doesn't bundle up because if you had all those in the same spot, it would be wider. So this way it just keeps your bundle from getting too big. So it's not bad when you only have three wires, uh, but it does add up and then um, it also just helps keep it cleaner. So 
something you can do. When you do that, you just gotta make sure that you cut the same wire long on one side as you do short on the other side. So it takes a little bit of thinking, but like I said, in the end, it helps out making it clean. So we got these guys down. We're gonna grab, <coughs> excuse me, a little Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna open these up. So if you haven't ever opened one of these up, um, you got the little, the wires go on to a board, the kind of control board for the power. And then that reads out to a potentiometer and a motor. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut this because I glued into another plane. We'll clean that up before gluing this wing. So you wanna make sure you keep all those screws in there. And then you've got this little board and it's connected to the motor on this end. And then on the other end, it's connected down to a potentiometer in there. So when the gears turn, the potentiometer senses where it is and tells the motor whether it should turn or not. So what we're going to do, this one's nice and easy. We're going to desolder these three wires and we're going to solder on some empty wire to that same spot. And you just want to make sure that when you do it, that you put them back in the same order. Like I said, this one's nice. Some of them you'll have one wire up here, one wire up here, one wire down here, and one wire down here, and all kinds of different. Having all three right here is just very helpful for this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my little helper, helping hands here. And I'll do this one real quick. I'm going to pull this off, and then um, I'll go ahead and do all these, and I'm going to put it fast forward so we get to the part where we're at that. So. Uh, enjoy. So right here, I'm going to show. I'm just going to go 12 inches because I've got all this plenty of wire. Um, you could measure it out, but like I said, I'm right now. I'm just going to go long. I'll cut it down the length once I get in there. So I'll go ahead and cut both these. Before we go and crimp uh, pins on the end, what I want to do is, <clears throat> um, first I'll need to clean these up, um, clean this glue off the back of these. Uh, we'll do that here in a second. But the other thing is, if you look, um, these, these bays are made for slightly smaller um, servos. So right now the tabs, I don't know if you can see that, the tab right here that's supposed to go in that slot is actually off by a bit. So instead of making a new slot and then pushing this all over, I actually prefer to cut up the back end. So what I'll do is line this up with these slots. Get this so it's better to see. So I try to line up the slots and then just trace along the back edge with the blade. So one thing I'm having a problem here with I talked about in the other video is sharp blade. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that out real quick. Okay, we're back with the sharp blades. So we're going to go ahead and um, I can actually just use this line I already have here from before when I did it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and just bring this over. Trying to keep my hand out of the way as much as I can for this. You have to also make this hole in the bottom a little bit bigger so it comes back to the back of the servo. That's fine because that's on the bottom side, it's already pretty much there, so that's not a big deal. Okay, so now let's just see real quick. So there, now that fits in there nice. So I'll clean this up real quick. Okay, so now we got those cleaned up. What we'll do is do this one. We'll take it and make sure you got the wire facing forward. And we're gonna drop it down in here. 
Now the other thing I'm not going to do yet is I'm not going to glue this in place. Um, I wait to do that because that way I can pull it out, put the servo uh, arm on there and tighten the screw up before uh, we go ahead and do all that. So, but we can get it in there and we can see here we run the wire back here through the channel, through here. And now we've got actually just about the right amount probably for uh, mounting this in here once we get our board in there. So there's one. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one bigger. Okay, so now we got those taped up out of the way. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and start looking at placing our ESC and uh, getting the motors cut. So I'm not going to worry about um, these lengths because these lengths are the ones that will depend on the uh, flight controller. So they'll go up through here. ESC is going to sit right there. I just use a little 30 amp. I get four pack of these off Amazon or something. They've been good for me. I haven't had any issues with them, so I use them. And then it comes up through here. So we've got plenty here. So I'm going to leave that. What we need to do, a um, couple things we're going to do real quick. This guy, as mentioned before, we've got all this air going in here, but technically you need four times the outlet to f as what you have in the inlet. Uh, that's not going to happen because this big old inlet we got here. But what I am going to do is come right down here. Right there, right there. Just widen that hole so that helps get some of it out. It'll also make it easier to get the wires through. So then the motor's going to go here and come through. So you can see we got plenty of wire here on our motors, uh, our motor wires. So we'll be cutting these. Uh, I'm going to shoot for trying to keep this about centered in the bay, I think. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut these guys down to length. Always keep these, even if it's a little kind of one inch pieces, you never know when you're going to need that. These motor wires are pretty good uh, quality wire usually, so it's good to have it around. You might have seen earlier, I use this uh, <laughs> Radio Shack. Good luck finding one of them these days. But uh, I use the rosin solder flux. Um, it's messy, but it works really well. So I've had this for a few years. You can see it's kind of actually getting low. But uh, it make, makes a bit of smoke. But uh, it definitely helps flow your solder much smoother, much easier. This would also be something that would be a little bit easier if you use the larger tip. Uh, I was going to wait until I get to the flight controller soldering to talk about that because uh, the battery leads definitely need it. Um, I've got this, they're real small points. I got a pack because I actually burned through one before, but these are really good for when you got to do small stuff. But then when you're doing bigger stuff, you need the heat. So you need, so this is the one I'm using versus the one that I use for batteries and stuff. So. It's good to have a soldering iron, that, a nice one. This is a Weller WES5151. Um, it's got a separate power supply. This is, it's, a, it's a better soldering iron, um, but you can get tip cha changeable tip soldering irons for a lot less. You don't need to spend a ton of money, but it's definitely worth having two separate tips um, or more different sizes. It's just a, different scenarios. Uh, if you try and use this little tip to heat up like an XT60, it's going to take forever and you're likely going to end up damaging other stuff because all the heat you're putting into it. Sometimes it's better to use the tools you have than trying to make <laughs> shortcut it. 
So we got that ready to go. So there's really not much more reason to not go ahead and glue that on. Okay, so I think that's all I'm gonna be able to do tonight. Um, hopefully the uh, parts will come in here soon and I can go ahead and get the flight controller in here and then actually figure out the lengths of these wires. Um, I haven't really even decided yet where I'm gonna put the flight controller. If I'm gonna keep it dead center or move it to the side. I actually even haven't seen the size. Uh, I think it's roughly about the size of a 30 by 30. It's actually probably smaller than this from what I've seen. So I might put it to the side, I don't know. Um, and then I've got the GPS module um, that we'll put probably, I think I tend to put it back here. I might even put it over here. Um, we'll get there when we, soon. And put our camera in and we're on our VTX and our uh, receiver. I was gonna go ahead and add in all the electronics into this one episode or one part, but I think what I'm actually gonna do, cause this is already getting over 15 minutes long is I'm gonna make this one part with just the servo and ESCs and then uh, we'll have a part 2.5 and that'll be installing the flight controller, the GPS, the receiver and the VTX and the camera. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and like and subscribe and again uh, hopefully the next part will be coming out here soon thanks